Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's comes at us from Stuart Amosur, Faiblesse Dissence. That's what we're checking out today. I don't know much about anything going into this one. I, I vaguely recognize the name. Maybe we did them on a live stream. According to uh, Bandcamp here in the corner, it says that the band was formed by Nij, a member of Alcest and Forgotten Woods, Audrey Sylvain and Fursi Tessier from Le Descris, with the purpose of creating music that reflects the dark side of the industrial era and modern civilization, which is... Okay. We got some Alcest and Forgotten Woods in here, which I think is black metal and do metal respectively uh so it'll be interesting to see how all that fits in here because this album art doesn't really say either of those let's dive in and see what Amasur is bringing to the table today Very moody. And the rise, this one right here. Boom, boom, boom. That gives me a bit of like a, I don't know, country fried rock ballad to it. A little bit of bluesiness. It's a very cool, almost like a pop rock ballad. Nice bass there. Just two chords, a little bit of darkness, and then a little bit of an uplift back to the darkness. Lots of reverb on the vocals. Kind of gives me a little bit of like a shoegaze vocal production. Just a little bit. The double vision on the vocals was nice. Bringing it back down, we had those offbeat uh, ride symbol, was it? Now we've brought it all back down on the beat. Feels heavier, feels rooted. Yep, 16th notes, heavy fuzz, had to come in. <laughs> this section is way too bouncy for the whole song. <laughs> I mean, it works. It I'll explain why, but it does, it feels like it comes out of nowhere, both times. Bringing this melody back. 
massive atmosphere over here with the heavy guitar. Nice fuzzy hazy atmosphere over the dreariness. Wait, is that it? I can't see how long it is because the album art's in the way. Oh, yeah. A couple seconds of silence here. That's it. Yes, yeah, so I enjoyed that. There is a theme. I don't know if somebody has only suggested it to me or if we've tried it in one of the Patreon polls. But it's, uh, generally speaking, black metal guitar work in non-black metal songs. This is a fantastic song that would fit in that descriptor. Because honestly, you know, when it comes to themes like that, I really rely on the community to point me in the right direction. Because I'm like, I have no clue. I don't think I've heard anything like that in my life. Um, but yeah, this this is phenomenal. I I really like it. It captures a lot of what the 16th note, heavy distortion, tons of compression, um, what that sound does, especially um, I think more focusing on the treble side of it, almost turning it into a little bit of a buzzsaw there, because it's not like this is the only, it's not like black metal is the only genre to do heavily compressed guitar work. Um, you know, post-rock, post-metal, uh, What's the other one? Oh, yeah, shoegaze, even. Although I think that's more tremolo picking because they use so many effects that it just completely removes the attack anyways, so it doesn't matter how in time you are. It it, it sounds the same anyways. Um, but yeah, there, there, it does what that does well, which is craft emotion and atmosphere and presents it in a song that is more harmonically wearing its its emotions on its sleeve. It's not obscured by any of the traditional production stuff that comes with black metal. It is sort of at its heart a pretty straightforward, I'd almost say radio rock ballad. Uh, even pop rock ballad, I think. It's a very light song for the first two and a half minutes or so. And then you bring all of this distorted guitar work on top of it to paint uh, a new context for it all, to put it in a new atmosphere. And yeah, this was a fantastic style of, of guitar to put in here to do that specific job. And it's never overbearing. It's enough to to color that that background of the picture, to, to add that atmosphere on top of everything and to recontextualize the more palatable ballad written underneath it and have all of it work cohesively uh, in parallel to augment what the other is doing. Yeah, that's just gorgeous. I'm going to have to check out more of this. Like I said, I, I vaguely remember the name and I'm pretty sure if I go check my list of live stream songs that have intrigued me, this band is probably in that list. But I'm sold on this one song. Looks like they only have two albums. At least insofar as Bandcamp is concerned. And one album's just an EP, which this one comes off of. It's track three out of three, and looking at maybe 20, 21 minutes total. Which is, uh, oh no, I can't count. 15, 16 minutes total. I was going to say, 20 minutes for a three-song EP is pretty wild. <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, about 15 minutes total. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's 15 minutes well spent, I think, if the other two songs are like this one. Let's get into this. What's going on? All right. Opening two and a half minutes. We have very simple harmonic guitar work throughout most of it. There are some transition ideas like the leading into the second brighter chord. There's a rising of three notes that moves into it. That provides movement in a melodic style, but for the most part, the guitar just gives us these two chords in a rhythmic fashion with a transition between them, a little walk up or a walk down. Uh, once we get to the chorus, the rhythmic idea changes. The transition ideas change, but it's still just two chords going back and forth. The guitars make it seem a bit more complex than that, again with the rhythm and the movement, but that's all it is. The guitars do a lot of harmonic weight here. The bass also does the same. There's a little bit more movement to it. The transitions are a little more engaging, but for the most part, the bass plays the pedal note over and over and over and over as eighth notes, right? So we get a lot of pedal tone coming out of the bass. The drums give us our beat. Not a lot of complex patterns coming out of it. A little bit of syncopation to create a bit of groove uh, and energy moving forward, but still primarily there to provide the metronome, the tempo, the beat. And that's... That's the first two minutes of music. On top of that, of course, we have our vocal line, which provides the core melody. And I think it's the second half of the chorus. We get a second guitar line that comes in that is a bit more melodic. But instead of holding out notes, it'll play a note and then keep hitting it over and over on eighth notes. Something very black metal, actually, now that I think about it. Just never holding a note out. You just have to have that constant attack going on. Um, and that does provide a little bit of a melody that takes the spot of where the vocals were singing. I, you know, it's not the second half of the chorus, is it? It's the post-chorus. The vocals dip out and the second guitar layer comes in and, and fills that space with this melodic idea. And then we do that again. The verse, and the chorus, and the post-chorus. It is very simple but does a fantastic job at creating this push and pull between the slightly darker sound and the slightly more optimistic sound. What I get through this is a song that is trying to portray some sort of positivity within the darkness, uh, a silver lining or hope for the future despite where we are right now. That's my take on it. The problem <laughs> then crops up in the second section, after the two and a half minute mark, when we start bringing in more and more and more of the distorted guitar work, which creates weight and pressure, they tend to feel like they're above the song with just this constant 16th note, 16th note playing. The sounds are massive, they're, they're large. They feel like weight being pushed down on the song and atmosphere literally like our atmosphere sits way above us and ca you know keeps us in this bubble on this planet. Um, that's sort of what this feels like. It's everything on the outside of you know our our general life, um, and it creates just this darkness, this haze, this heaviness, and it brings the whole song down. What I think is really interesting is that the back and forth. The juxtaposition of the darker versus the brighter is still present on the acoustic guitar work. It's still present in the bass, but we add more and more of these distorted guitar layers and it begins to take the spotlight. It's really difficult not to see the haze, not to see that weight and darkness above everything, despite the core, the foundation, everything under it, flip-flopping between these two, creating this contrast. The song feels like it gets heavier and heavier and heavier when really it's just one instrument layering itself up a couple of times, putting this dark overlay on everything. If you get rid of that, it's still the back and forth. It's still trying to find hope against uh, any sort of despair. And I find that to be really interesting because it 
it it convolutes it. Can we turn that into a verb? What that probably not. That sounds weird. There's a word that I'm missing. It becomes convoluted though. Where initially I think that the the tension of the song is between the hope and the darkness. We go back and forth on these for two whole minutes. That's our yin and yang. That's our bright and dark. That's our protagonist antagonist. But that's not it. There's a second layer. The hope and darkness versus the overwhelming despair. And how that overwhelming despair continues to gain more and more layers of guitar work to make it thicker, to make it more palpable, to make it more present. And so, yeah, you are trying to find hope in these dark times. Um, but you're also trying to find hope in these dark times against an increasing awareness of darkness. And I think that's a very cool way of crafting this little song. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a battle on top of a battle. And I just think that's awesome. You know, by the end of the song, we have our vocalist engaging in some harsh vocals. Uh, I think they're in French. I didn't pick up on any words I understood. Uh, but she sings a couple of clean notes and then holds out a final syllable and puts rasp into it until she pushes it up into what sounds like to me compression on top of a, a nasally, probably head voice. Um, and yeah, that's the last thing she does is scream as more and more of these layers come in and compress around her. Assuming that this is a song that reflects the dark side of the industrial era and modern civilization as their general band description states, yeah, I can definitely relate that. <laughs> that feeling of an ever-growing weight and presence of darkness and just wanting to scream because there's nothing else left to do. It'll be interesting to see what that phrase is that she escalates the final syllable on, but just in the general context of vocal delivery within the story the song is telling me, I think it works <laughs> really well. Um, I think that wraps it up. I mean, that's pretty much what I got out of it. It's a simple song with solid execution, utilizing a guitar style that I'd love to hear outside of its normal uh, environments and does a phenomenal job of you know, doing this, this, uh, this task here of creating this atmosphere on top of the song. Um, and the story I got out of it, the narrative the music told me. So, y'all know what that means. Time for lyrics. Um, well, first of all, I found this website called Lyrics Translate that I think I've used before in the past. Um, you know, if... if if you see me using it in an older video and you're like, see, you did use it. I, I vaguely remember seeing this interface. But anyways, I'm going to start using this more often because they guarantee that all lyrics are hand translated. Now, I suppose people could use AI or Google Translate and submit them. I don't know if there's any sort of verification progress process, but... I will say that this translation is a lot better than what Google Translate gave me. Uh, so, shout out to Charuyent, the translator for this one. Um, and if you listen to songs outside of your native language, and you would like to know the lyrics, lyricstranslate.com. The title translates to weakness of senses. It's eight, sorry, 12 lines long in groups of four lines. First stanza, second stanza, final stanza. The gestures are regrets that a pause accentuates. Energy is lost. Desires linger. Each phase of comfort alters. Each phase of discomfort alters reason. I don't necessarily understand what's going on here. There is the end of the song that I think ties all of this into a vague negative relationship with human reproduction. 
We'll touch on that in a little bit. But it says that the gestures are regrets. That energy is lost, desires linger, and each phase of discomfort alters reason. Regardless of what this is about, it paints the picture of something that is not great. A lot of the words are negative. We have regret, loss, linger, discomfort, and the discomfort alters reason. So the more that we are in this state, the less reasonable we are. The more things that we do that we regret later and the less energy that we have. The next one says unspoken, unstable moods, weakness of senses and frustration, suffocating consciousness. I am disgusted. Assuming that this ties into the first stanza, we're certainly moving on and attributing the physical relationship, or sorry, the personal relationship to whatever we're talking about. A person feels suffocated by it. They feel their senses weaken. They become frustrated by being in this unstable mood and are disgusted with all of this, who they are, what they're doing, how they feel. This is all very vague. I did mention reproduction, though, which makes me think that all of this might be related to libido, sex drive. I bring all this up because of this final stanza. Internal filth. Bodies are havens to the caresses. The smell disappears after they release their seed. A permanent void will quiet the remaining. Yeah, that's kind of my direction on this. It's a very interesting song, especially when compared to a lot of uh, modern popular music, which is very sex positive. This is a song about not enjoying the way your body feels when you're horny, basically. And taking a very rational approach to... Rational might not be the right word to it, a very emotional approach to this whole concept and not really enjoying being in your body when these chemicals start kicking in the way they do. It's a frustration with this element of the human life. I find that very refreshing, even if I don't uh, share much of the feeling here, whether it is about sex drive or not. I don't think I can really think of anything that puts me in an unstable mood and makes me frustrated and makes it so that I can't make good decisions um, and feel suffocating and makes me feel disgusted, at least not from an internal perspective. But I appreciate that this person might, if nothing else, the, the lyricist has created a song from the perspective of a fictional person who feels this way. Um, and I think they do a really great job of characterizing people who might feel this. It could very well be a song about being asexual but still having a high libido. Maybe something to think about there. Uh, you just don't you don't see too many lyrics about this, and I find it really refreshing and engaging. Uh, on top of that, it could also be uh, what's that word um, where you see yourself in art. Again, this isn't really a topic that comes up. And if you do kind of feel disgusting about some way that your body does something you have no control over, I think the song sort of sums up that feeling rather well and you might find it relatable. Is that the word I wanted earlier? I don't know. Yeah, this fits in with the song though, musically. Uh, it's about this rising element. It's rising energy in your body that you don't like. That's the guitar work right there. And it gets heavier and heavier so you can't ignore it. Um, by the end, all you want to do is scream. Yeah, I, I think this is a very cohesive, very cool song. It does a lot of really neat, unique things. 
on the auditory and the lyrical level in a way that is very cohesive when you put those themes together. It's just, this thing's firing on all cylinders. I definitely have to check out more of Amasur. So those are my thoughts on, uh, what is this song called? Faiblesse de Sons uh, by Amasur. Let me know what you thought about this track. If you have anything to add on to what I said, correct me on. Maybe just give your own thoughts and opinions about it. Maybe you want to tell me that my French was not great. Uh, please, though, if you do speak French, let me know how it was. I, I like to improve my pronunciations in other languages, and French is one I feel like I butcher a lot, so I can take some pointers. <laughs> um but yeah, any thoughts about the song, go ahead and put them down there. Above the comment section in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today, but I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of supergroups and check out another special selection. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. <laughs>